I had a colleague who came to my apartment and picked up a thousand dollar check because the survivor just left her perpetrator and is now living in a space where she doesn't have access to cash. This particular survivor is seven months pregnant and already has one child and has been experiencing abuse. So if we were to take a step back, on March 12th is when we went remote. It became clear very shortly thereafter, I mean, I'm talking a few days, that survivors were facing extreme forms of economic hardship. They were facing greater forms of isolation and that the ramifications of the pandemic and its impact on survivors were becoming acute almost immediately. Since early April, we've actually hired a team to deliver and source groceries from a wholesaler every week. And so far, we have distributed over 3,000 pounds of food. And so we are continuing to assess how we can show up for survivors in this moment and how we can demonstrate to the community that we will continue to be here no matter what. The next year and a half is going to be incredibly challenging. And in the midst of this moment, it is our responsibility to continue to show up like we have never shown up. But it's partners like the New York Women's Foundation that believe in our vision, that have stood beside us, that have helped us get through this moment. Believing in Saki for all of these years and continuing to stand beside us, that is radical. That is generous.